there are places on Earth where you can just look up at the sky and it takes your breath away. An epic night sky full of stars and other stuff? Let's see if we can find one near where you live. The Natural Bridges National Monument in Utah would be a great place to start. The Rhön Biosphere Reserve in Germany is pretty good too. Then there's the Iriomote Ishigaki National Park in Japan. And there's always Cherry Springs State Park in Pennsylvania. Get this, the stars you see when you gaze up might not be there anymore. That's because some stars are so far away, their light takes years to reach us. Take Deneb, for example. Deneb's light took nearly 3,000 years to reach us. So the light we're seeing is actually 3,000 years old. Closer to home, flying around in space, asteroids. These clunky pieces of rock come in all shapes and sizes. Some aren't even made of rock, and some are the size of dwarf planets. That's huge. Take Ceres, a dwarf planet between Mars and Jupiter. It hangs out with its other asteroid buddies in the asteroid belt. Think of it like this. If planet Earth was the size of a nickel, Ceres would be the size of a tiny chia seed. Remember that huge space rock that supposedly wiped out the dinosaurs all those years ago? Of course not, you weren't even there. That was a full-out asteroid, not just a meteorite. Asteroids usually break up when they hit Earth's atmosphere, splitting up into a bunch of small meteorites. But this big boy was so dense and massive that it survived the journey all in one piece. What hit the dinosaurs was the real thing. That asteroid, the one that wiped out those poor dinosaurs, is thought to have been about eight miles wide and it did all that damage. After an asteroid enters the Earth's atmosphere, it speeds up like crazy. That's why it was so powerful. If it had floated down with the help of a huge parachute, well, not much would have happened. And today, we might even have dinosaurs as pets. Or worse, they might be our overlords. Don't worry, most asteroids are pretty well behaved, sitting nicely in that huge ring between Mars and Jupiter, just like our dwarf planet buddy, Ceres. There are more than 200 massive asteroids in the ring. But asteroids come in all shapes and sizes, and we can't ignore the little ones. They need love too. And there are a lot of them. They're not even that little. Around a million of these baby asteroids are about half a mile long, and millions more are even smaller. There are cases of asteroids coming pretty close to Earth, and that's definitely something we want to avoid. They might be interesting and fun to watch, but they could cause serious problems if they crashed into us. So, what could we do? Basically, just observe and report. Scientists track any asteroids near Earth and try to predict their journey through our solar system. The ones that get really close are called near-Earth objects, or NEOs. The largest asteroid to have approached Earth was estimated to be about four miles wide. That's about 70 football fields. That's quite a lot of football. About once a year, an asteroid the size of a car hits the Earth's atmosphere. Our atmosphere is pretty good at breaking these guys up. So all you see is a small fireball streaking across the sky. Woohoo! Free fireworks! September 2017. That's the last time a really big asteroid got close to Earth. The next one? NASA says it won't be until around 2057. How about smaller ones? They come along every couple of years, and they're only about three to six feet wide. The smallest one ever came in 2008, and it was only about a couple feet long. I mean, you can probably stretch your legs that long. What about the ones that have actually hit Earth? Some of them made quite a big impact, leaving a crater where they crash landed. The single largest known impact zone of an asteroid is the Vredefort Crater, and it's huge. It's about 180 miles across. That's the distance from New York to Boston. It's in South Africa, and it's about 2 million years old. So what would happen if an asteroid was on a collision course with Earth? What would we do? Lasers. If we were to point powerful lasers at the asteroid for long enough, we might be able to change its course. We could also use a gravity tractor. This theory involves using a spacecraft to orbit around the asteroid, slowly pulling it off course. These are all pretty sci-fi though. The one method that we'd probably end up using 
is to just throw spacecrafts at the asteroid. Hopefully, it would either change course or split up into smaller, less dangerous bits. But say one does hit Earth. What would be worse, it hitting a city or hitting the ocean? Hitting a city would be pretty devastating, but there would probably be plenty of time to evacuate. You'd have time to fly or drive to another city, though it might be hard to find a hotel room. Still, buildings and landmarks would be gone. No more parks, streets, or houses. If an asteroid hit a city, first off, it would feel like a massive earthquake. People in cities far away would probably feel the impact. Then, fires would start breaking out everywhere. That's because of all the factories, gas stations, power lines, flammable stuff everywhere. Buildings, cars, trees, a lot of things would be on fire. The asteroid would also leave its mark. There'd be a huge crater right in the middle of the city. In the 1700s, Lisbon in Portugal was struck by an earthquake and a tsunami just after that. No big surprise, Lisbon was totally destroyed. It took ages for them to completely rebuild the city. But after the makeover, the city was better than ever. It had wider streets, more businesses, and the city got a brand new image. After that earthquake, Lisbon rose up again and was better than ever. So if an asteroid ever hit a modern city, we could definitely learn from its example and build a better one. Imagine this, a futuristic and eco-friendly city. A city with lots of green spaces, bike lanes wide enough for everyone, skyscrapers that disappear out of sight, roads so perfect there wouldn't be any traffic, sidewalks that would actually be fun to walk on, a place for businesses to thrive and jobs for everyone, a city powered only by renewable energy, and loads of good vibes from its citizens. We might even have crazy new things we'd never seen before. How about getting to work or school on a zip line, or a huge underground mall that goes on for miles and miles? Or how about see-through bridges and tunnels? <laughs> that would be awesome. Maybe I could finally get everything delivered to me by drone, or somehow never have to take the trash out ever again. Worst case scenario, it could be turned into a sanctuary for wildlife. Let nature run its course and have wild animals live there, free and happy. In just a few years, the whole place would be green and full of life. Animals do pretty well once all us humans move out. If it hit the ocean, though, unless it was near the shore, the damage would be minimal. The water would absorb most of the energy from the impact. It's like throwing a rock into a pond. Sure, it causes a few ripples, but even they disappear after a while. The big danger would be if it triggered a tsunami, like in Lisbon. We could also mine the asteroid. It might be full of precious metals, like gold, silver, platinum, or other metals we've never even seen before. Scientists have been trying to find a way to mine asteroids in space and bring the metals back home. That kind of project would be ridiculously expensive though, so not worth it. But if an asteroid decided to knock on our front door, we'd be more than happy to mine it. For now, let's just hope they stay up there in space.